Welcome to new video from Not Real Engineering. In today's Abacus tutorial, we are going to see damage model using BUS DFLD subroutine. I am going to solve this example. So this is a two dimensional geometry which has a notch at the center. We will fix one side and we will apply a displacement boundary condition on other side. All the dimensions are given over here which are in millimeters. Then we are going to assign a hyper elastic material property for this domain. Now in Abacus, you can assign hyper elastic material, but you cannot assign a damage for hyper elastic material. Therefore, we are going to use this subroutine to incorporate damage in hyper elastic material model. For hyper elastic model, we are going to use Ogden model with three parameters. These are all those parameters which we will use, which are taken from this paper and we will use maximum principal strain failure theory. What this theory states is whenever a principal strain at any point reaches some critical value, the damage will start. So that critical value we are going to assume at 0.3. This is just for demonstration purpose. Usually for rubber like materials, this critical strain will be much higher, maybe 1.3 or even more than 2 or 3. When we use this subroutine, what is going to happen is for every element, this subroutine will check what is the principal strain. And if the principal strain in any element reaches beyond 0.3, we will just delete that element. And that's how damage will propagate. Now, if you want to know more about hyper elastic materials, I have a separate video on this channel. Please go and check it out. The link is in the description box. Now to talk specifically about this subroutine. This is a user subroutine to redefine field variables at material points. This subroutine has explicit solution dependence, which means the accuracy of result will depend on size of time increment. But for explicit analysis, usually it will not be an issue and we are going to do explicit analysis. And while creating a material, we have to include this user defined field. So for whichever material you include this, for those material points only this subroutine will be called. Along with this, we have to include DPVAR as well. This is for element deletion just shows the sequence in which we will get stress or strain if we request it from Abacus. I will talk about this more when we go to the actual code. Now let's start with Abacus CAE. We will model this problem first and then we will go to the Fortran code of this subroutine. First set up your working directory and then create a part 2D planar deformable shell. First let's create a rectangle first corner 00, 0 and second corner 10 comma 10. And then let's create a notch, which will start at 0 comma 6, go up to 5 comma 5 and again back to 0 comma 4. Then I will trim this edge and delete this part. Done. Our part is ready. Next thing, go to property, create a material. I am going to name it as rubber. First, we have to give density. I will give maybe 1 E minus 10. Then you have to go into this DEP VAR and increase this number of solution dependent state variable to 1 and variable number controlling element deletion to 1. Then go to user defined field. Here you don't have to set up anything. You just have to select this. Finally, to define hyper elastic property, go into elasticity and then hyper elastic. Over here, choose strain energy potential as Ogden. Select coefficients and increase the order to 3. Now here you have to give those parameters. I will just input these parameters mu1, mu2, mu3 and alpha1, alpha2, alpha3 from this table to Abacus CAE. I just inserted all those parameters over here. And for D1, D2, D3, you have to input 0. This is because our material is incompressible. Then say OK. Let's create a section, maybe again name it as rubber, solid homogeneous section with material rubber and then assign the section. Then go to assembly, create an instance. Next go to step. Let's create a dynamic explicit step. Say continue. Over here total time I'm giving 0.01. .01. Say okay, no need to change anything else. Then go to load. First, let's fix the bottom edge. For bottom edge, u1, u2, 0. And then let's apply displacement boundary condition on the top edge. 
I will select this top edge and I'm going to give displacement U2 as 4. Now for dynamic analysis, we have to define amplitude. Therefore, let's create one amplitude, tabular amplitude and just a simple amplitude for time 0 amplitude should be 0 and for time 0 0.01 which is our step time amplitude should be 1. That's it. Say OK and then select that amplitude over here and then say OK. So displacement boundary condition is done. Next go to mesh. For mesh first go to part and over here there will be a stress concentration across this notch and the crack will propagate in this straight line. So I'm going to keep fine mesh over here and coarse mesh near the boundary. For that let's make some partitions. First I'm going to make partition like this and then maybe one circle near the crack notch. Let's say like this. Okay looks good. Then let's seed the part. I'm going to apply a finer seed over here on this four edges. Let's make it 0 0.05. Looks good. Here also maybe fine seed 0 0.05. Okay. And for all the other edges, I'm going to keep it much bigger seed. Let's keep it maybe 0 0.5. Okay, then go on mesh it. I'm using free mesh, but you can use structured mesh and do some other partitions as well. We are keeping much finer mesh near this notch and along this path where crack will propagate. Let's assign element type. Explicit plane stress. Nothing to change. Now one more important thing we have to do is we have to go into this field output request and over here you have to go at the bottom expand this state field user time tab and you have to tick on this status unless you do this status the elements will not get deleted so don't forget to do this and this interval also maybe we can increase to let's say 2000 say ok let's create job say continue and when we create job we have to go to general and in user subroutine file, we have to select our user subroutine, which is VUSD FLD. Say OK and say OK. Now let's go and see what that subroutine looks like. This is the VUSD FLD subroutine. These are all the parameters which are associated with this subroutine. To incorporate maximal principle strain theory, what I am doing over here is I just added some more terms which we will use for our calculation. First, we are accessing the strain data for all the material points and this is just to check if we are getting strain data correctly or not. If we don't get it, it will give an error, but don't worry about this part. It's okay if you don't include this as well. This is just optional. Once we ask for this strain data, it will get stored in this R data and it gets stored in a sequential way. So it is flattened tensor and this is a 2D case. Therefore, we will have four components. E11, E22, E33 and E12 and the sequence in which you have to access them is given over here in this table. So you can see for 2D case, first component will be always 11, then 22, 33 and 12. Same for stress and strain and if you are using it for 3D, this is the sequence in which all the components will be given. So from that data, we are just separating out all four components and once we have these all four components, we can calculate principal strain. Here Abacus will not give you directly the principal strain as an input to this subroutine. It will always give you just strain components and you have to calculate maximum principal strain and minimum principal strain by yourself. Now this is just a representative example so I am not using minimum principal strain at all. What I am doing is I have defined a critical strain value which I have defined at 0.3 as I mentioned over here and then what we are checking is if maximum principal strain is greater than critical strain or not. If it is greater then this state variable we will set it as 0 and when this state variable becomes 0 that element gets deleted. So very simple subroutine just calculate principal strain and check if it is exceeding the critical strain or not. 
if exceeding set this variable to zero and the element will get deleted you can use this same subroutine and implement maximum principal stress failure theory as well here you can calculate principal stress instead of strain for that here you can just ask for stress data instead of strain data now if you want this code this code is already uploaded on our channel's github profile and the link for this in the description box below over here you can see this code is already available you can also download this code you just have to go back and click on this download code option over here download zip and you can download the code and you can change it as per your need you can also go to not real engineering homepage in github and you can see all the other codes as well which are used on this channel now let's go back to abacus ci and run this example let's submit the job it will take some time as it is explicit analysis i will just fast forward over here a few moments later okay job is completed let's see the results and now if we see the deform shape yes see the crack propagated in straight line and sheet is just now in two pieces let's animate this in time history and see how crack propagates you can see over here there is a stress concentration near the notch and once strain reaches the critical value the crack will start to propagate that looked amazing Let's watch it again a bit closer. See the stress concentration and now crack will start. Yep, that was cool. Sheet is under tensile load now and once crack propagate these fluctuations as because the, that tensile load is released and after some time if we have a damping it will come to stop. But we don't have damping that's why these oscillations will go on. If you want to know how to insert a damping, I have a separate video about it. You can check this video. Link is again in the description box. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please show your support by subscribing to this channel, which will give me motivation to create more educational videos like these. You can also go to channels playlist tab and here you can see all the videos with similar topics combined together. For example, let's say if you are interested in ANSYS tutorials, you can go to this ANSYS tutorial playlist and see all the videos from this playlist. All the codes and files which I use for these videos are also available for you to directly download from this channel's GitHub profile. The link of this profile is given in the description box below. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.